Hello fellow YouTubers, this is N0AGI. I'm here to do a quick short video about the newly released STPO tool. You probably watched my previous videos of uh, an earlier release, a beta release. Uh, as of two days ago, I launched a, a production version of the product. It's a free application anybody can download uh, and be able to use it. Uh, so if you go to my n0agi.com and then go to APRS menu option, go to satellite APRS, go to software, and then select on the STPO tool, uh, you'll be brought to this page. And you can read all about it, uh, take a look at a few pictures and such. Um, but if you want to get uh, a copy of the free software, just go to uh, this link here, download. And that should take you to my OneDrive shared drive or shared folder. And then click on the STPO release. And you should see two folders, one for the x86 32-bit and the other is the 64-bit. Depending on which PC yours is, uh, you could select uh, that folder and do a download. And then after you download, um, you should be able to launch the application uh, and go from there. Um, so I've already um, I already have a copy of the software with me, so I'm going to bring that up and uh, do a quick walkthrough. So when you first launch the application, this is what you would see the very first screen. Uh, as you can tell, this newer version 2.0, and that's the build number, is a lot more cleaner than the beta version uh, I had launched a few weeks back. Uh, the newer version is cleanly split into tabs, as you can tell. And the very first tab is where you will start uh, seeing the list of satellites that you have defined in the XML file. Um, and then as you hover over each of these, uh, you will start seeing some detail populated at the bottom uh, section here. We'll come to this later. Uh, for now, I have three um, entries in my XML. The top one is the ISS satellite, uh, the second is PSAT, and the other is uh, PCSAT. If a, if a satellite is enabled, that satellite entry or, uh, will be processed by the tool. And if it's disabled, it's obviously uh, not processed. Um, and every time you launch the application, the system will automatically go to the internet uh, and grab the latest TLE uh, from whatever source that you had defined. In this case, I defined the Celestrac uh, from the amateur.txt file. Uh, so it goes to that uh, source and grabs the latest TLE or the two-line element uh, data for these, uh, for these satellites. Those that are disabled are obviously ignored. The second tab is where you define the options and settings for how you would like the tool to behave. And I'll quickly walk through these. Um, the very first option here, it says alarm, audio, alert. So the the option names have these prefixes in them just so you can quickly find out or or zone in on those options um, and, they, and they mean something. For example, alarm underscore, uh, essentially what that is is um, they are either sounding alarms or email alarms or or things like running an external file, uh, sort of a trigger, and things of that nature. So these are, think of these as um, actions that will be taken by the tool when a pass-through occurs or pass-through completes. So the first option is set to true, uh, where I'm asking the tool to sound an alert when there's a pass-through uh, just happening or has completed. Uh, the second one is you're asking the tool to uh, include some core uh, properties as part of the notifications, things like elevation, what the satellite name is, what was the AOS and the LOS time, and things of that nature. Um, and if you turn this off, you basically don't get those uh, details in your email. Uh, there is also an external run command. Uh, this is a batch file that you can have it run when the pass-through starts. And there's a batch file you want to have it run when the batch file complete uh, when the pass through completes. 
and you could include whatever you would like in these batch files. Let's say you had an external circuitry uh, or you want, you want some sort of a side process to run or whatever be it, the batch file will be called with certain command line parameters that includes the satellite name, the pass-through details, and so forth that you can use in your own uh, logic. The next item here is the from address or the display name in the email. So if you choose uh, to send out emails, you can say my display name, the from name, uh, just so you can process your Outlook or whatever email client rules that you would like to set up when these emails uh, get sent. Uh, and this is the from address. Uh, and you might want to replace this with whatever email address uh, of your choice. And, uh, and because you are asking the tool to send out emails, you want to provide a user ID for your mail system and provide a password for it. Uh, and then provide a, an SMTP mail server name that the tool will have to use to go send out those emails. Um, and this is a subject prefix for those emails to go out. Again, this will help in the Outlook rules management or any email client rules management. The next item here is the recipient's email address. This could be a single person's email address or this could be a group email or whatever be the case. This option is automatic, uh, the default tab. Currently, we are in the second tab. Technically speaking, this is a tab number one. Uh, this is tab number zero. Uh, and this is one and two and three and so forth. Um, so you can change this to whatever you want it to be, uh, but, but every time you change these tabs, this value will be updated automatically. So you can safely ignore that option for now. Now what this provides is uh, it adds a debug pass-through. So let's say you are just trying to use this tool for the first time. You want to see how this tool works add a, a test pass-through satellite entry for me so that I can see how the tool turns on the logic and turns off the logic for the pass-throughs, etc. So this is mostly for anyone who wants to play around with the, the settings and whatnot. And then when you set it to true, it adds a test uh, debug pass-through and you can say the duration for that pass-through is how many minutes. Is it one minute, two, three, whatever. So the maximum you can go to is 10 minutes. So that's that. The next set of options is for the operator. You probably saw my previous video where I have attached a, an external a relay switch to this application to my PC. And then that relay switch is operated through a COM port. And if you have a relay switch, that you want to turn on and off, you can identify what the COM port is, and the tool will automatically open the COM port, turn on the relay switch as a result. And then when the pass-through completes, the tool will automatically turn off the relay switch through that COM port, and then your radio would be turned off. Typically, you would have something like COM, nine as an example. Uh, the next option is automatically enable the operator mode. So it basically turns its logic to operate that station on and off. And if you turn this uh, off, it'll not engage that logic. All it does is really just sits there and does nothing. By default, the value is true. The next one is uh, your elevation, rather. What is the elevation level you are interested in? I'm interested in tracking uh, at least a 10 degree elevation of these pass-throughs uh, because in my experiments, I've noticed that uh, anything below 10 degrees of elevation hasn't been that much of a, uh, a productive eye-gating experience for me. It's up to your station and where you're located at. Uh, so you can define whatever makes uh, most sense to your station. And the time buffer, this is kind of interesting because, as an example, would you like the radio to be turned on a minute before the acquisition of site or two minutes before or five minutes before, whatever be the case? Or when the value here is zero, you're asking it to turn on the radio exactly when the acquisition of site 
occurs. In my case, I usually turn it on two minutes before the acquisition of site for that particular pass-through occurs. The next option is whether you want to use the acquisition of site or whether you want to use the horizon time. Now, QTH is your QTH lat long coordinates. You should change these to yours to whatever uh, makes sense to you. The last two options are after each pass through, do you want the tool to go to these the sources of the TLE and automatically refresh the latest TLE so that after every pass through, I know that I have the latest TLE in my system. The last option here basically says every time the tool starts, I want the tool to go to these sources and get the latest TLE. You could always force a manual force of acquiring the TLE by clicking on this button. So those are the options. The next tab is where you would probably spend most of your time in your operation uh, experience. Now the top section here shows the list of satellites that have the upcoming pass-throughs. So the operator tab is where you probably spend most of your time operating uh, in your station. Uh, this, this particular tab is split into two sections, or actually three sections here. The top section has the, the two satellites that you had enabled uh, in the master list here. And what it shows is the top pass-throughs for those two uh, satellites. The next pass-through for ISS is scheduled to happen at 9.24 a.m. my time, and uh, the loss of sight is uh, scheduled to happen at 9.34 and 9 seconds, a total of uh, 10 minutes, 1.5 seconds uh, duration. The elevation is 25.1, and uh, that's scheduled for today. The PSAT is the same thing here. Um, so whatever, how many of our satellites you have defined here that are enabled, uh, they will be populated here, showing the next immediate pass-through that's scheduled for that satellite. The right section here shows the status of your pass-through. Currently, none of these satellites is passing through right now, so the pass-through is currently off. Let's say if ISS were to be passing through us right now, this would be turned on and this whole section would be colored red. The bottom section here shows a running log of activity. This is kind of important for you and I because we are able to now track down any bugs or any debugging related data. Uh, so for example, if you notice any anomaly or any bugs, and if you want to communicate that back to me, when you click on the button, you would see a, a file that shows a big dump of the debug activity from that tool. And then you can basically copy paste this log data or even just send me the file. Last but not least is just a, an about screen where it shows your version, the build date, and a link to the product site. It should take you to my blog page for that product. So that's a quick summary of the tool. So let's see it in action. For me to show you it in action, obviously I can't use the ISS and PCSAT now. These are live entries. So for me to show you an effective demo, I'll have to wait till uh, another hour and 10 minutes. So instead of doing that, I could go to my options and settings and I can turn on the debug uh, pass-through and I'm gonna go to my operator. And as you can tell, it added the, the test SAT entry here. As you can tell, the tool is running. It's waiting for this time, 8.19 a.m. to pass through. It's currently 8.16. And it has turned its logic on. You might be wondering, why is it turned on when the time hasn't passed through? It's because of the two minutes buffer time we set in the option here, operator time buffer. And then it'll turn itself off two minutes after the loss of sight. I'm gonna actually uh, close this down before I close it down, I want to change this back to zero so I can show you a faster demo. Launch this again. It added that debug TLE entry. And let's see, um, it'll turn itself on at 820 because the buffer was set to zero minutes. So it'll turn itself on exactly at 820. There we go, it just turned itself on. It'll run itself for about a minute and it'll turn itself off at 821 sharp. So let's watch this now. 
okay now it turned itself off and then it's back to green and let's go back here and uh, turn the debug option to false it takes it out of the list what does the enable operator do it will disengage the logic process these pass-throughs so even though the tool is up and running it's not really doing anything with these pass-throughs so just sits idle and one clue is when you uncheck this box the spinning wheel doesn't spin anymore all right so that's a quick demo of the tool guys so thanks so much for your time and please drop me an email you can use this email actually to send me a quick note and uh, would love to hear from you any feedback comments any ideas that i can implement in the tool um, and so forth uh, and if i can help answer any questions happy to do so and also help in getting you up and running with uh, using this tool. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon.